hello this is video k k and it's going to be a an example to try to illustrate all of the stuff about conditions that we looked at last time for starters i'm going to um make it easier on myself for the future and by the way i'm going to uh, alternate between doing demos on a pc this is pc and demos on a mac just for equal time so if you have questions about your specific system, we can deal with that office hours or email, or whatever. But I've got to go to Windows C, Drive, Program Files. What I'm searching for is the code blocks thing. And I don't want to have to do this all the time. So I'm going to right click on codeblocks.exe. EXE is for executable. We know what executable is. And send to somewhere. Send to, send to desktop create shortcut. That's what I want to do. So I don't have to navigate through there all the time. Look, it even has its very own little customized icon. Now I can just click on that whenever I want to open code blocks. Whenever I want to open code blocks. There we go. Okay. And we'll start here. And I'm going to go to file and make a new project. New. I probably don't have to explain this to you, but I will. I haven't used code blocks before this semester, summer school. We used to use something different and they just now installed this in the lab. So yeah, I'm kind of hunting and pecking myself on this. New project, I know we want a console application. Go, go, next, next, C++. Project title, this is my example 01 because we might have more than 10 examples. Uh, example one, and since it's the project title, I'll say what it is. This is going to be to uh, demo conditions. There. And I believe these, it looks like these are all the settings that I set up last time. So you don't have to enter those every time. You can just put the project name of your new project and away you go. Leave everything else the same. And there we are. And there's the main.cpp that it made me automatically come on open up there you are except i don't want to use that main um actually i'm going to shrink this down temporarily and i said i was taking shortcuts so i wouldn't have to hunt and peck now i am i've got to surf over here this is us this is docs this is the one and only lab we've done so far and there's my original source code file i'm going to right click on that and copy and where is my summer stuff? Oh, I know what I did. I put that at documents and then just one level up from that. So it's close to the bottom. There it is. 2124, summer 2020. Click, click. There's my brand new project. Double click. And now I right click and paste there. And lab1a.cpp, I'm not going to leave it that. You are now going to be called, you shall be mine and I shall call you uh, example01. There. I don't need to put demo conditions. That's the name of the project. Why did I do all that? Well, let me click out of here. And where, oh, where is code blocks? Open that again. And Maine, you are out of here. You have outlived your usefulness. No, I, you know what? I better leave that there because it might make all this stuff disappear. I'll start by clicking on sources. Right click. Nope. Right click on. I told you I was new at this. Right click on the name of the project itself and add files. And I want to add the file I just now renamed, example01.cpp, open, and all that stuff, whatever it said. Okay, now you'll notice that it was added to the source code files over here. Main, I no longer have any use from you, so I shall right click and um, get rid of it. Uh, remove from project. There we go. So now, now I have a project with my lab1a.cpp, and I didn't have to type it in all over again. Let me make sure I didn't break it. Let me build it and run it. Build and run. Temperature 1, 2, 3. <clears throat> we'll assume that's right. 1, 2, 3. Yeah, that's 50.5556. Or at least I'll say it is. Be sure to press enter. Not click away from the window. Now, why are we here? We are here because we are making a new program from this. This will now be... Well, no, I already... I did rename it on disk. I need to rename it up here. That's right example one.cpp flustered old man my name here okay i shall do that let's call me r england and then away we go um and i need to upgrade the documentation it's doing more than that d-e-m-o demo conditions 
No, that's not right. Demo use of conditions. How are we going to do that? Well, instead of doing one, let's convert a bunch of temperatures. Convert temperatures. No, temperature values. There we go. That's good enough for now. I might need to go up and adjust that later. How are we going to do that? Well, let's say, for purposes of argument and code development, that instead of just one temperature, we're going to do a whole bunch of them. And enter temperature. Let's let's only do it for water. Watch this. Water. Enter water temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and read it in. Now, before by the time I get this far, I've read in a water temperature, but I might want to do several. So I'm going to backspace over here, and put a comment to and what am I going to do? A loop as long as temperature is a water temperature t-e-m-p-e-r-a-t-u-r-e -E -E. there we go i can't spell either how are we going to do that well as long as indicates to me uh that we don't know in advance how many times we're going to be doing this which that calls for a while loop spelled in english while and if it's water it's got to be above freezing fahrenheit so it's got to be f d e g r e e s it's got to be greater than the freezing point. Notice, look at this, symbolic constant. I get to reuse that. And I don't have to go to all the trouble of typing in 32. That would just be exhausting. E-Z-I-N-G under, oh, look at this, it's trying to help me. I think I could probably press enter, yep, and it did. It filled it in for me. Your editor may be different depending on which editor you're using. It's gotta be more than that, and simultaneously, it's gotta be D-E-G-R-E-E-S less than the boiling point b-o-i-l-i-n-g underlined f for consistency and start a statement block oh i don't like that mental note i need to close the statement block now um this c degrees thing that's in a loop so i'll tab that over i'm going to actually tab over everything that i want inside my while loop while that that print it out then close my statement block there and notice oh look it highlighted those to show that they match so now we read a temperature and we're going to keep going forever and ever and ever as long as f degrees is at least the freezing point and no more than the boiling point so let me save this make the star go away and then i'll run it no i won't it's trying to give me an error message Boiling F was not declared. Well, you know, I, I think I said maybe in the video about symbolic constants that the symbolic constants will reveal themselves to you. That symbolic constant is trying to reveal itself to me. And I should pay attention. Const double boiling ing underline F equals 212.0 semicolon. There. You happy now? Save. Uh, Compile and run, and it runs. Water temperature degrees Fahrenheit, 123 degrees. Whoa, halt. I can control S, I think. Yep, control S will stop. Control Q will go, but that doesn't help. It's going forever. So I need to click on this X up here, stop the madness. And I didn't get a normal termination message. I broke out of the program by clicking on the X window. What's wrong with this picture? Well, let's look at the logic here. I said what the program was going to do. I read the initial value. While that initial value fits this condition. Is this wrong? It's got to be at least freezing, but no more than boiling. Then calculate the centigrade or Celsius equivalent and print that out. Then go back again. Well, here's the problem. When it goes back again, it's going to use exactly the same F degrees that it used the first time. Because there's no way to get a different one. Here's a lesson for us all. I'm wagging my finger at you. You just can't see it. There's got to be some way for this condition, if it's ever true even once, there's got to be some way for that condition to eventually become false by executing the body of the loop. Here's how we read a list of unknown lengths. Prompt, read, test for Sentinel. Sentinel just means the value that is going to kick us out of the loop. Prompt, read, test, yada, yada, yada. And then the very last thing at the bottom, Prompt to read again. 
So I'm going to prompt and read again by copying. I don't know how to copy and paste. What I'm doing is shift delete insert. So I take it out and put it back. Now it's in the internal buffer and move down to where I want it and shift insert again. And bada boom, bada bing, it copies exactly the same stuff, except I need to indent it to show that I know, you know, the American people know that it's inside that while loop. Prompt for and read a temperature value in degrees F again. There, change the comment a little bit. Enter and I'll even make the prompt different. Enter another water temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. And save and see if this will run any better. Uh, let's see. Water temperature, 123. Um, change that. E, let's see. Degrees Fahrenheit, 45. Yep, it's going. It's going. It's in a circle. 100. Uh, let's stop the madness. 21. Well, that was pretty blunt. All we got was the end of execution uh, message and press any key to continue. So, um, this this ended pretty abruptly. Let's let's end a little more gracefully. After we fall out of the loop, and I put that in parentheses, fell out of loop. Dot dot dot. Uh, print a message. What do we want to print? See out. Done with the water. Well, no. What you know what? If we here we go with another example. If it ain't water then it's either ice or it's steam. Look what I can do, look what I can do. If F degrees um, is what? Less than, I better get less than or equal to freezing F. How come? Let's stop and think after I can get this. I can't type and talk at the same time. Okay, now then. Let's think real hard. Why did I need less than or equal to instead of just less than? Because up here I use strictly greater than. And if I want to cover all the possibilities, I have to cover the other two possibilities down here. If I just put less than, then it's still not going to print a message if, if, if it is strictly less than. I, I stated that horribly. Let me try it again. This is going to keep going as long as F degrees is strictly greater than freezing. I want to catch if it's less than or equal to freezing. That's the other two ways it could quit around the freezing point. So if that happens, I'm gonna print out um, ice. There. Well, that's not a horribly enlightening message. Let me add stuff to it. See out. That's not water. That's well. I need to develop a convention. Am um, I going to put the space beginning to the end? I'll put it after getting ready for whatever comes next. There. That way, I don't have to remember to put one in front of ice. And I'll, just for convention, I'll put a space after ice, even though I probably won't see that. That's not water. That's ice. And you know what? Let's go ahead and do. An illustration of an else. Else has its very own statement block. This is what will happen if my if condition is false, which will be if it's uh, what? Well, it, um, it won't mean that it's. Here's a very strange logical thing here. When I fall, let, let me type this first. See out, and then you can you can. Uh, shrink back in amazement or shock or whatever you want. That's steam. And you caught me. If if it's not below the freezing point, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's steam. Except, let's put on our thinking caps and think about where we are. If we are here, that means we fell out of the while loop and the while loop was going to keep going as long as the temperature they typed in was a valid water temperature. So, what are the reasons we could possibly fall out of the loop? There are two. We either fell out because it's ice, because it's less than freezing, or we fell out because it's steam. It's greater than the boiling point. Those are the only two possibilities. So no, it is not invalid for me to use an if else down here. The only two possibilities left for F degrees, and now I'm repeating myself, are that either it's ice or it's steam, or so I'll claim. And I'll shut up and run it and see if I know what I'm talking about.
Let's all see if I know what I'm talking about. Uh, degrees Fahrenheit, one, two, three. That's boring already. Let me put in 21. Well, you know what? That message, that that is cosmetically poor, but it did the right thing. That's not water, that's ice. Mental note, go back and clean this up. Let's do a couple of things. I'm going to do, an, whoops, not another C out. An endo. Just, those don't have to go at the very end. I could put that at the front. And what that's going to do is leave a blank line before it prints that. And you might well have observed from our earlier use of it in the lab assignment, slash T is a single character in the mind of the computer, if we're using C++, slash T is how you type in the tab character. Why not just put a bunch of blanks? Well, we could, but there are tab settings on each machine. They might be different, and this way all of our tabs will be consistent with each other. Or so I claim, save, compile and run, Water temperature, one, two, three, that's the only temperature I know. Uh, another temperature, 21. Look how much prettier that is. That's not water, that's ice. Run again, so much fun. Uh, 45, 67, 5,000. <laughs> that's not water, that's steam. That is really, really hot steam. Uh, that'll probably burn you. Okay um what do we not have we've got a while loop that uses condition it actually uses a compound condition we have uh an if else we don't have just a plano if that steam look at this i'm going to put a plano if inside the else which is absolutely legitimate if it's possible that it's exactly maybe it's unlikely unless i remember to type it in if f degrees is exactly equal to it's not going to be freezing if we're down here it's going to be steam boiling point roiling boiling point i'll press enter because i want to accept that thank you mr autocomplete or ms autocomplete um if it's well then here's what i'll have to do. well no i'll keep going see ya all one word uh what's my convention i'm putting the space after so i don't have to worry about it they put dot 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 in parentheses but just barely it's just barely steam it's just at that boiling point and here's my conundrum i want that to be on the same line as steam and ice so what i'm gonna have to do is print my little ice or steam message and print my little but just barely message and then when the show's over after i've completely finished the if else all of that went on the same line. I'm going to sneak in a C out in line. There. Whoops. With a colon. And now it's, or so I claim, it's either going to print, that's not water, that's ice, all one line and then in line. Or it's going to print steam and in line. Or one more possibility, an if without an else. If it's boiling, it's going to say, but just barely. Meaning it's just barely steam. But I violate my convention. I need a space in case I decide to print anything else on the same line. And then return zero. Now, all these possibilities to test, let me sh shave it and build and run. Build and run. And one, two, three, of course. 21. That's not water that size. I've already tested that. Okay. Let me make sure I didn't break the steam. 500. What if I start with 500? Well, look at that. It did not execute the while loop at all. If the condition for your while loop is false, the first time it gets there, it never executes the body of the while loop. So now we've seen both extremes, also known as boundary cases. The boundary cases for this while loop were it goes into an infinite loop, but I've got to break out of it because my program never execute, never finishes. Or it doesn't execute it at all, and it seems to now handle both of those. I've taken care of the infinite loop. That's not water, that's steam. I still haven't tested the extra deluxe version. Uh, 34, that's water. 212 exactly 212 that's not water that's steam but just barely all on one line press any key to continue i think i will um and we have conditions all around a compound condition and if we do not have a for loop uh i don't have anything to loop through uh gratuitous for loop <laughs> Shouldn't use big words unless I can spell them. Gratuitous for loop example. I'm setting a very bad example. That sounds like a comment I might get from a student. Not any of you, of course, but maybe one of your classmates, who knows. We could, it just means just for the sake of it. 
let's just do a for loop. I'm going to print a message, see out, and I'll do. I remember it up in front to do an inline, so it separates it with a blank line. Uh, how happy are you with life in general, with summer school, whatever you want to relate it to? And let's say it's got to be one to ten. How happy are you on a scale of one to ten? And that's a prompt, that's all one prompt, and I want it to stay in the same line, so I don't put an inline at the end, I put a semicolon. And here we go. See out, I'll put an intro message with an inline and a tab. Look at me, I'm trying to be so exact up front. Um, what, what message am I, oh, I know. Then you are space. My own convention semicolon now here comes the for loop here comes a for loop for and this is how it's typically set up this is our first real life example int i that's called an index variable it's really just a plain old garden variety integer variable but you've got to have some sort of integer counter in general for a for loop to keep up with how many times you're going through and here's how it works int i i you keep going as i is less than the limit happiness which is a variable that I do not have yet. And plus plus I, that's the first time we've seen C++ as namesake. Plus plus is shorthand, in this case for I equals I plus one. Not, not for, let me, let me strip off the four. Plus plus I is shorthand, this. I equals I plus one. Those two statements are equivalent. Plus plus I is the same as I equals I plus one. So here's how this is gonna run. It's going to set up initial variable i, and I need to initialize it to zero. That's why it's called the init statement, the initialization statement. So it makes a brand new variable i, just to count how many times we need to go through the for loop, initializes it to zero by convention. It's a very strong convention there. That might as well be the rules of C++. We keep going as i is less than happiness, and then we plus plus i. Remember this last mysterious statement is going to be slipped in invisibly at the bottom of our loop. Stop talking and start typing. So, um, you are, uh, I've already got a blank. Happy, exclamation point in space. Over and over and over again. And then see out in line when we're done, just to kind of cap it off and clean off the mess a little bit. Um, now, oh yeah, what I forgot was, if I'm gonna ask them, then I also need to read it in. CN into happiness is a warm puppy. Gratuitous for loop example, I'm gonna ask him, how happy are you? Read in happiness and then loop that many times. That's the plan. Save, compiling to run, rips. I saw red, red's not good. Error, happiness is not declared in this scope. Well, even though I only use happiness right down here in this little section, it's not part of the for loop itself. So I'm gonna run all the way back up here at the top and you know what i'll leave a blank line up there int space to make it well that was a tab happiness okay there now i don't need to initialize happiness because before i use it i'm reading in a value way down here now how happy are you one to ten i read in a value of happiness and i should loop that many times put my money where my mouth is one two well i don't need to do that i tested that uh two that's not water, that's ice. Now look at this, here's the brand new prompt. How happy are you, one to 10? I am four happy. I am four happy, I don't know what to do. And it prints out, then you are happy, 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 happy. That was so much fun, let's try that again. Uh, temperature, 1000 degrees, of course, that's steam. How happy are you? I'm 100 happy, I'm off the charts. Oh, it did it. That's 100 happies. I am so happy, but I can't see anything else. Um, Houston, we have a problem. We asked them courteously and they disobeyed. Never trust your user. How happy are you? You know what? We can read in a value of happiness. And remember this trick up here where we ask them to type a water temperature. There's no way to require them to do that. But we check and make sure it's a water temperature before we do anything with it, before we use it and continue on. What does that have to do with anything? Well, down here, I can pull the same little stump. Watch this. While happiness is less than one. 
then I shan't go on. I don't want to use it unless it's at least one. While happiness is less than one, and happiness is greater than 10, then I'm going to yell at them. Bad user. Please try again. We'll get nice. For emphasis. Bad user. Please try again. And to give him a second chance, we got to have some way to get out of the slope. So we got to read in happiness again. C, C, N, coin. C, N, greater than, greater than. H, A, P, P, I, N, E, S, S. I'm such a terrible typist. It gives you time to take notes if you want to. Uh, so what do we do? Our gratuitous for loop. I should l label the loop. Loop. H. 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 A. P. P. I. N. E. S. S. Times. There. That's what this for loop is all about. Looping that many times. Bad user, try again. So if they don't behave themselves, we're going to make them do it all over again. Compile and run. One. How happy are you? I'm uh, 16, 15 happy. Well, it didn't make me do it again. Back to the drawing board, the logical drawing board. <laughs> How happy are you? One to 10, and we're going to try to enforce that. Uh, 15. They typed in 15. While, I want to hang on here. 15 is, it's not true that 15 is less than 1. 15 is significantly more than 1. So the first half of this condition is false, so the whole thing is false. What's wrong with this picture? Well, it can't be simultaneously less than one and greater than 10. Ah, yes, it all comes back to me. I did that on purpose, see if you're paying attention. Uh, upper right, two vertical bars. Now, while happiness is less than one or it's greater than 10. In other words, if they're off the chart on either end, they can't be off the chart on both ends simultaneously. So if they're off the chart on either end, bad user, do it again. Quit messing around. One, two, th well, one, two, three won't kick us out. Twelve will. How happy are you? I'm, I'm still 15 happy. Look at this. Bad user. Please try again. Don't like that? How about 51? I'll transpose. Still bad user. Negative nine. Evil. I, I should have increasingly bad error messages one I'm, I'm giving up i'm about to give up zero maybe no no well let me read the instructions let me go back and read what the syllabus said one to ten how about three you are happy 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 oh aren't we so happy now one more thing i could quit it there but it would just be so against my nature to quit when i can still think of things to do let me see um print the happiness again and i'm not going to bother the user they've already gone to all the trouble to type in a valid value i'm going to say int j equals zero while uh, j is less than happiness whoops no semicolon in there start a loop and see out and so i can tell them Sep different uh, apart from each other i'm going to do happy with a capital h exclamation point space and i still need to end the line see out end all and i need an intro message see out and i did uh did i do an inline yeah inline and tab over and again you are, it should tell us how happy you are, once again, on a different line. Let me see if it runs. Save and run. Uh, 200, no, 200 won't stop it. Two, three, four, that'll stop it. How happy are we? We're, we're 19, we forgot. No, we're five. Oh! What happened? Mm. While J less than happiness. 
Oh, look, look, they fooled us. I said they were exactly alike, but they're not. This is built into the for loop. If you're going to use a while loop, you've got to do it by hand, so to speak. So I need to put plus plus J down there. Dinky little statement. Why would that make such a big difference? Well, if I don't put plus plus J down here, then there's no way for this condition to ever rise to the point that it will be equal to happiness and kick us out of the loop. Did it on purpose if you're paying attention. You can't believe that when I say it, by the way. You figured that out. Um, how happy we are. We are six happy. I don't think we've been six happy before. Look at this. You're happy, 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 happy. And again with caps. Happy, 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 happy. Press any key to continue. Why did I do that? Well, to show you that you don't even absolutely positively have to use for loops, except, uh, yeah, you really do need to know how they work or you're not going to be able to read anybody else's code because everybody else uses uh, for loops instead of while loops whenever we know, here's the difference, when we know in advance how many times we need to loop before we get to the loop. I read a valid value for happiness up here. So I already know between one and 10 how many times I want to print out the word happy. If you know in advance, rule of thumb, use a for loop. If you don't know in advance, we don't know how many uh, water temperatures the user is going to type in, so we need to use a while here. They might type in none. They might type in 100. It could be anything in between. So we've got to prepare ourselves for anything. We want to be robust and bulletproof. Uh, you know, one more thing, um, just while we're at it, I'm going to number these to show. No, I'll do it in the for loop. I'm going to illustrate why it goes from zero and it stops when I is less than happiness. That's the convention. So I'm going to put a square bracket, bear with me, and then print out the value of I, and then another closing square bracket, and then the word happy. So here's the plan. Um, it's going to print out a square bracket, and then whatever the current value of I is as we're going through the loop, close the square bracket, and then print out the word happy. You know what? Why don't I just run it for crying out loud? Uh, 900 and three no not three that's not enough we can't see seven look at this then you are zero happy one happy two happy three happy three, yada 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 six happy it did loop seven times but since it started counting at zero because I told it to in my for loop it stops after number six number zero through number six that is seven times so I'm still seven happy why, oh why, oh why? Why don't I start at one and go for until I is less than or equal to happiness? Because we are barreling down the road toward arrays, lists in other languages. Arrays have index numbers that go from zero up to how many elements there are in the array. So we need to get in this habit right off the bat of setting up for loops so they start at zero and they quit when they get up to the number of iterations you want to go to. Okay? So I'm going to save that in case it's not saved. I don't think I've got anything else to say right now. Uh, I can close up shop here. Everything goes away. Um, yes, I modified it. I, oh, I took out the main and put in a new one. So I have no idea what that is. Yeah, save it. Okay, and that's it. If you have questions, uh, come by during office hours or send me emails, whatever. And I'll see you online.